I'm going to quickly go over practical ways you can use the commands df and du, and then I'm going to talk about how they differ and when to use each, starting with df or disk free. When you run df with no arguments, it's going to report the space used and available on all currently mounted file systems. Of course, you can pass in a uh, individual mounted location that's going to return the file system of that individual mount. In this case, if we're looking at the df return, we have the file system here. Now this command is going to show us total space counted in 1000 byte blocks. In this case, it's going to show us the amount in total for this individual file system, the amount used, the amount available, and give us a percentage used, and then the information on where it's mounted on. Now, this isn't super readable, these 1000 byte blocks. You can use the dash H command that makes this human readable. Now, being pedantic for a second, this is actually going to show you kibby bytes. Basically, these are powers of 1024. A lot of times you're just using this as like a guesstimation tool or like an overall summary. So it doesn't really matter. But if you actually want gigabytes, or basically the international system of units, you can use the dash capital H, and this is going to show actual gigabytes or powers of 1000. You can do dash capital H or dash SI for system international, I'm guessing. And there you go. It's actually going to show, again, the total size of this individual file system, the amount used, the amount available remaining on that individual file system, as and then also showed as a percentage here. Lastly, you can also use just the dash I command. And this will show you inode information, which you can also use with dash H to show human readable. And this is again, going to show inodes, the amount of inodes used, the inodes free and a percentage. Now, moving on and looking back at all of the high level file systems on this individual machine, we can look at those all again. Let's just look DF dash capital H, and this is going to show us all the individual file systems like I was mentioning before. Now it's going to show us the, again, the size used and available, but let's say we wanted to total these all up. We can use the dash dash total, and this is going to total up and show us an overall total of the used available and the space remain. Now we can get a little bit more information here. If we use the dash capital T command, this is going to show us the individual file system types. And then we can filter by those types using the lowercase T. For example, let's say we wanted to just see XT4. We can use lowercase T to only show us the file systems with XT4. And then the opposite of that, we can use the dash X command. And this is going to filter everything that's not the individual pass file system. In this case, show us everything that's not XT4. Lastly, there's a lot of other file systems that are on an individual machine, uh, including pseudo file systems, duplicates, things that are inaccessible. And you can see all those with the dash A command. And this is going to show you things like slash sys or slash prox or slash dev, right? Things that aren't traditional file systems. Okay, that was DF. Now looking at DU or a tool to estimate individual disk usage, you can run also by itself without any flags or arguments. In this case, it's going to show you the disk usage of the current directory you're in. This is equivalent to running disk usage with a period, right? Exact same thing. Now, this is going to show you a lot of information. Basically, this is going to print to the screen, again, the individual blocks used of individual directories recursively within a given location. Now, uh, not super readable, which you can use the dash H command just like you saw before with DF and get this human readable. Again, this is powers of 1024. Unfortunately, there isn't a capital H for the DU command, but you can use the dash dash SI, and now it's going to show us properly, you know, kilobytes gigabytes and megabytes instead of kibby bytes, gigabit, gigabytes. Gosh, I never say that. Uh, you get what I'm saying. Powers of 1000 versus powers of 1024. Now, keeping this going, though, this is actually going to show you all the individual directories within a current directory recursively, but it's not going to show you the individual files within those directories, which you can actually see with the dash A command. And this is going to now print out to the screen the sizes of all the individual files within those individual directories. If this is too much information, you can use just the dash S command, and this is just going to summarize the overall disk usage of the individual directory you're in. Honestly, this is probably the flag that I use the most, right? How big is an individual directory that I'm in? Dash S will just tell you basically how big is that directory. Or directories, for example, we're looking at this current temp directory, but let's say we also wanted to look at the root home directory. We can put both those in as arguments. In this case, we're going to get the total summary of temp and root. And if we wanted to total those, we could also use the total command here, and we get the 43 gigs as the total of, in this case, the directory temp and the directory root. Now, there's also, now instead of passing in the whole flag total, in DU, you could use just the dash C command, and it's going to do the same thing. Unfortunately, that's not in DF. Okay, let's talk about using these together to solve common scenarios. Let's say you get paged about high disk usage on an individual machine, right? You would probably start with DF, and you would use dash H, 
And then let's just look at, you know, disk usage for the root file system. In this case, we have something that's taking up 50 gigabytes. Let's say the system we're not expecting there to be something taking up 50 gigabytes. And we can use DF to get a high level summary of how much is used and how much is available in a given mount. But this is not going to help us actually figure out what's taking up that 50 gigabytes. Now we're going to have to transition to D using DU. So we see that it's on this root file system. We can use DU slash A and let's look at root. And then let's actually make sure we pass in uh, an eight or let's do SI just to stay consistent here to make this human readable. Um, and this is going to show us all the individual files in this root file system. Now, if there's a lot of things on here, it could take a while. This system doesn't really have that much, so it actually can print through everything here. And the problem is, is it's not sorted for us, which we can actually then pass du into sort. Now, because we actually have du printing out human readable strings sort is actually not going to appropriately be able to sort these so we're also going to have to pass in dash h to sort and it's going to sort based on human readable files in this case it's going to take a second again because it's running all the way through but it should show us overall kind of the largest memory hogs in this case root is taking up 50 gigs we see the temp folder is taking up 38 within the temp folder we have a file called bigger file here and we have another file called big file here at 11 gigs but then we also see this file for five gigs within the root which is random other big file here right now this is going to take a little bit of parsing sometimes there might just be like a ton of log files that may not be individually that big but maybe a part of a directory sometimes it's going to take some time to actually parse through that's when this syntax in this format is going to be helpful right you may see uh the forward slash log directory is taking up a lot of space even if you don't have an individual file and then you can go in and figure out a better log strategy for example now inversely sometimes you just have a really big file that you want to find uh within a given system. Now you can actually pass in du as an exec function to find. Not going super deep to find, but let's say we just wanted to find an individual file. We can do that with find. In this case, we have to specify a type, which we want to do f or file. And then we're going to say we want to exec as the, the way that we're going to find um, du dash si. And then this is basically syntax for a placeholder or the file for find. And we have to use a plus sign here to basically say that we want to pass all found files into a single invocation of du, which is just more efficient. Um, and then we're gonna pipe this to sort dash h. And what this is gonna do is basically execute du to then find all the individual files and then it's gonna sort it. Uh, it's going to print a lot of things to the screen, but there it should actually just show us the largest three files that we're actually looking for without all the other information about directories. Uh, understand that you can chain du to a lot of different things within Unix in general. Okay, that's kind of actually using them on the command line. Let's look at the differences and how each of them work. DF, like you've learned, or commonly referred to as disk free, is high level. Think 30,000 foot overview of file system information. It gets its information from metadata, right? It's pretty fast. It operates pretty quickly and it uses the stats FS and the stats VSS VFS system calls to actually get this information. So it's getting the actual statistics. And you use DF for a question like, I wonder how much space is on the root drive. Now, looking compared to DU, or it's commonly referred to as disk usage, it's space used by individual files and their directories. Importantly, it's an estimate because it scans each file in their directory, which is also slower, and it uses the stat and the ls stat syscall. So it's actually, you know, looking at each file and the information about each file, not the metadata itself. And you use DU for a question like, I wonder what is taking up the space on this root drive. That was DF and DU. I hope you learned something here. If it sounds like I'm extra sick today, it is because I am. And if you're wondering why I didn't just wait until I'm not sick anymore, it's because I don't know when that's going to be. So uh, if I don't get better, uh, the best comments will get my channel. Uh, hope you have a good time looking for big files. Uh, have a good day.